Greetings everyone, my name is Adderville, and welcome to my Let's Play of The Revenge of Shinobi, a 2D action platformer developed and published by Sega for the Genesis in 1989. This will be a full playthrough on the hardest difficulty setting, and this was a request by Sylveon and not Kyle. Round 1, The Ruins of Oboro Village. We play as Joe Musashi, Master Ninja out for revenge. Zine has reformed into new Zade, and it's up to us to stop him. The green ninjas are known as Omote, and the samurais are Kabudos. I'll try my best to not use any of my special abilities outside of two spots. And now it's stage one, no sweat. The first four stages are going to be no sweat for me, as these past weeks, I've beat this game about three dozen times. The Emotes and Kabutos are no sweat. In these stages, there are these secret boxes. You have to experiment and search out the stages in order to find them. I mostly just memorized where they are. That, and I have a document right next to me which indicates where they are. This is called the House of Confusion, but honestly, there's another stage which better fits that definition. Here's our first boss, the Mighty Samurai Blue Lobster. The former Mighty Samurai, that is. On to round two, Tokyo. Or rather, we begin at some rocky cliffs next to Tokyo. This game is entirely linear, Jaden. This takes place in the modern era, 19xx. Don't go for that 2 up, you're most likely gonna fall into the abyss. Now we're in Tokyo proper. Be warned, sometimes these crates will not contain helpful items, instead, they'll be bombs. Thank you. 
Now we're facing off against members of the Flower Dragon Gang, or as I prefer to call them, Street Fighters. Also, you may have noticed that even upon taking a hit, I didn't take any damage. Well, that's because for most enemies, there's no contact damage. You only take damage if they're explicitly attacking you. Epilepsy warning ahead. On to the second boss, Shadow Dancer, at the rave. And now a Shadow Dancer. Round 3, a military base. For now, no more ninjas to worry about. Just a lot of enemies with firearms and explosives. This stage is neat, as it's one of the few ones which has two layers to it. A foreground and background, separated by this fence. You can switch between the two by double jumping. Ow. The reason why I didn't take damage here is thanks to my power-up. The power-up powers up my weaponry, but it also grants me one shield, basically. I don't have contact damage, but there is knockback. And, um, the collision detection can get a bit weird. Usually it's in my favor, but there are some strange peculiarities. It's kind of difficult to provide running commentary when you also have to focus really hard on the game. The thing with hardest difficulty is that it has the most number of enemies, you start with zero lives, and you take double damage from every source. Here's boss number three, the supercomputer. which is basically a brain in a jar. Bye. <laughs> Round four, Detroit. We crashed the aircraft carrier into the US. I gotta say, even though the grunts are far less mobile, they're more dangerous than the ninjas. 
To be fair, the ninjas are basically mercenaries for hire. The Oboro clan is, or was, one of the best ninja clans in the world. The other nice thing is that if you get close to an enemy, you use melee strikes. Welcome to the furnace. When I was growing up playing this game, this is one of my favorite stages. It's also really easy to break and get to the exit ASAP. For a moment there, I forgot that I didn't hit that power up. That's also two up, don't go for it, you're gonna fall in the pit. All these power ups respawn after dying, so you can farm two ups really fast. On lower difficulty settings, the biggest hazards I'd say are falling into instant death traps or pits. Speaking of odd collision detection, I didn't even touch him and it got knocked back. Not a nice thing about the power up, if I keep walking forwards, I basically have a shield which deflects projectiles. Including some stuff you wouldn't think are deflectable. And the boss of stage 4 is Hercules, or Master Attacker, or the Terminator. If you know what you're doing and you have a power up, most of these bosses are kind of jokes. Round 5, area code 818. Now we're in this tower. No, this game does not have multiple paths. It's entirely linear. There is one stage which is non-linear, but it's really just a maze. There goes my power-up. The ninjas return here, and you can't destroy the laser cannons. The Karasus are back. I mean the Kasumis, sorry. We saw them initially during round 2 act 2, but now they're a greater nuisance. So we have two layers again. The background layer is on our freeway, so you have to be careful about the cars. It's not the green cars you have to worry about, it's the red ones.
Yeah, to disguise. They use the same disguise in round 2 Act 2. I didn't take the street level, so we didn't see it. Oh, this is a problem. There is no more power-ups in this stage after this point. And I want this power-up for the boss coming up. So I'm gonna have to finesse this. Speaking of generous collision... And the boss at this stage is... the missile truck. And we win. Gotta go fast. That truck was traveling at least 100 miles per hour. Using his ninja super speed, Joe travels to Chinatown. Once you get over 400,000 score, your life reaches max. Back to the Flower Dragon Gang. The hitboxes on melee enemies can be a bit... strange. I mean, regardless if you take damage or not, you're getting knocked back. This jump. It's a bit awkward for me to pull off. Now that was a solid hit, I deserve that. Hey Larry. Nope, that's the one after this. I would be more talkative, but due to double damage, Bad things can compound really fast. At the very least, the game refills your health after every stage. Make sure to avoid the eye. That was kind of rude of the game to place an eye right there. You only have about 2 seconds to react to it upon spawning in. I wonder if anyone notices that someone's running on top of this train. Uh, here comes the upgraded emotes. This time, they can match your ducking. Which actually works more in my favor. Once you get outside the cave, this stage becomes very straightforward. It's mostly a straight line, and the enemies don't rush towards you anyways. And there aren't any real riflemen to shoot at you from a distance.
Oh sure, there are the flame sword grunts, but they're not long distance. And the boss at this stage is... Spider-Man. No, it's not Spider-Man. It's Metamorphomer G. This is one of the trickier bosses to dodge attacks, especially the web troll. And in phase 2, he turns into Devil Man, another comic book hero. How did I dodge that? That should not have worked. Bye. The implication here is that Spider Man was hypnotized by Neo Zed. Which, if you read comics, isn't too out of the ordinary. Alright, we're coming up to the home stretch. We're now in New York. Oh boy, this stage. This resulted in the most number of failures during my practice runs. And one of Musashi's greatest weaknesses, water. This jump. I was never able to do it without a power up, so I'm just gonna use my special ability to increase my jump height. MSI is double jumping in this game is a bit awkward. It's so easy to get knocked into the water. And if you have the shurikens to spare, just spam your flower spread attack, or rather your multi shuriken attack. Of all the grunt type enemies, the ones I'm actually most worried about are the grenadiers. At least with the riflemen and gunners, you can slowly inch forwards usually and shoot them. Most projectile firing enemies in this game cannot attack you if they're off screen. Ah, I thought there was a power up here. I must have missed it. Note that I'm making this look a lot easier than it actually is. This game is on the more difficult side, especially on hard and hardest. It's really easy to get jump scared by an enemy, or shot in the face. Like here almost. We did it. Alright, time to RNG me to play this boss. Monster G. Walk forward. Shoot three times, do the tail sweep. Shoot again. Spread. Jump over him. Again. We win! This was Monster G. Essentially, a clone of you-know-who. Which is totally something an evil organization would do. Round 8. Neo Zed's Marine Stronghold. This is it. 
We're at Neo Z's headquarters. I don't think this is the toughest stage. I think stage 7 is tougher, but this is also kind of tough. Remember, if you can spare the shurikens, keep spamming your flower spread attack. It'll save your life many times. Ah, oh, this is kind of nasty. I wanted to push them back a little bit more. Um, yeah, that was... This was kind of stupid of me. I should have deflected them back a bit more before jumping up there. Also, this was very lucky. Ah, uh, 8-2. This stage is a giant maze. There are at least 28 entrances and exits. So, for the sake of this playthrough, I'm only gonna take the direct route. If you don't know the direct path, this is by far the hardest stage. This is what I was talking about earlier about the non-linear stage. If you stand still, they can never hurt you. Okay, cornered. No problem. Ow. Uh, you missed the majority of the game, Vacuum. We're in the final stage. Alright, for this room, carefully move left, throwing your shurikens. The combination of emotes and kurasus makes this rather dangerous. But don't worry if you lose your power up. Go over here, shoot the wall to the left. Here's a power up. It'll be very handy for the final boss coming up. If you want the easy one version of this boss, immediately use your base ability. The Ninja Master, the leader of Neo Zed, who has a rather sick hairdo. I was never able to figure out how to dodge the first one. When I first played this, I didn't expect the boss to be a Kabuki dancer. G to the G. And we win. World has been saved. I want to emphasize that I made this look far, far easier than it actually is. Like during my first playthrough of this game, it took almost two hours, and a game over three times. So overall, I like this game. 
It was actually one of the first platformers I played on the, well, not really Genesis, but Sega Smash Pack. It was a nice trip down memory lane. And thank you to Sylveon and Nakao for suggesting this. In any case, thank you for watching my Let's Play of the Revenge of Shinobi viewers. If you enjoyed it, please rate, comment, favorite, and or subscribe, as they all help out the channel. Don't forget to follow me on X, Macedon, co-host, and Blue Sky as well, and join my Discord server, as I regularly post updates there. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you all in a future let's play